Hello once again, I'm Extra Life. The other day I was watching a video by Mylar Melodies, and he was talking a lot about the utility of switched multiples in Eurorack synthesizers. As it happens, I've got a tiny little gap up at the top corner of my synth that I've been meaning to fill with something about that size, so today I thought we might try and make one of the easiest DIY Eurorack modules, the switched multiple. The switched multiple really is as simple as it sounds. All it is is a couple of input jacks, a switch, and an output jack. And in my case, I want to make a dual switch multiple, so it's going to have four inputs, two switches, and two outputs. And that's a lot to fit into a tiny space. So the very first thing we need to do is cut our panel to size so that we can lay out these components in a way that's going to fit. As you can see, there really is not all that much space in the top corner of this synth, and we are going to have to cut a piece of this aluminum to fit exactly in there. So we're going to measure very carefully. 14 millimeters, maybe 13 and a half. So we will cut that panel down to size and see if it fits. Well, it fits. Now it just remains to be seen whether we can get all of those components in here and have them still accessible to use by hand and plug stuff into. But now this is really difficult to get out. Ah! Alright, I've gone ahead and marked the top and bottom rail protrusions. In my case, they're not quite symmetrical because the middle rail is a bit thicker. If you've got regular Eurorack rails, then you should just be able to measure it from the specification sheet. But in any case, now we need to distribute these components in such a way that they make sense to use and also fit in the space that we have. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. What we could do is just measure the height of this panel, divide it by nine, and then we would get eight evenly spaced projections. But I actually want a little bit bigger gap right here so that it's intuitive from looking at it that there's two separate kind of modules contained within this. And also the height's not symmetrical. So I'm just gonna go by I. Now that the panel's marked up, I'm going to take a center punch, or you can also use just a nail and a hammer, and I'm going to center spot all of these marks so that when I drill, the drill bit doesn't wander. When you're drilling a thin panel like this on a drill press, it's important to have really rigid clamping, and it's tough to get that right near the center of the drill press. So what I like to do is drill the two outermost mounting holes first, and then screw this down to a backer board. Alright, now it's time to stuff this panel full of parts in. Generally that's a pretty straightforward affair. You put the parts in, put a nut on, and you tighten it. These uh, little funky conjacks, they all have an 8mm socket. And I figured now is a nice time to show off my fancy new We are at 8mm driver sockets. I found that these are a lot more ergonomic. They've got kind of some knurling for hand tightening. They stand up and they don't roll away when you set them down on the desk. Unfortunately, a lot of these funky conjacks that I bought uh, have these really quite annoying knurled nuts and you need a specific knurled nut driver tool to tighten these. It's quite annoying. I wish they would just sell them all with hex nuts. I like the look of hex nuts better, but uh, we gotta go with what we got. I have found this problem to be really quite distressingly common in electronic components. About one in 10 of these hex nuts will either have no thread at all cut in it, in which case you'll spend 10 minutes trying to thread it on and get more and more frustrated, or like this one, have a malformed thread uh, that has not been properly deburred and won't go on past the first quarter turn. Do be mindful that you get uh, quality parts and get some spares because often you have to throw these out. All right, so here is the module all put together and we are ready to wire it up, do some soldering, which I guess is a chance to show off my fancy new solder holder spool. This is carved out of a single chunk of live oak. It took me ages and it turned my chisels into butter knives. The way this module is gonna work is these two are gonna be inputs. This will be an output and then this switch will toggle connecting the top one, neither, or the bottom one. So you can have, uh, let's say, a gate coming in and switch between gate signal one, gate signal two, or off. 
So these are 3.5 millimeter jacks. You'll find them all over Eurorack products. They're ThonkyCon jacks. They're a little bit harder to solder as like wire hookups. You might want solder lugs instead, but I've got a bunch of these around, so we'll just use them. And they are ring, tip, and normally connected tip. However, when you plug in a jack, this pin gets disconnected and is left floating. So it can be used for normal signal routing that's adjusted when you plug something in, which is why this design is so popular. Anyway, we can ignore the middle pins for now, and I'm just gonna connect all of the ring pins together because they're just gonna be a common ground for each switch multiple. And in theory, they should already be connected because they're all touching the metal panel. But when it comes to grounding, I'm kind of a belt and suspenders kind of guy. So we are just gonna put an extra wire and make sure that everything stays connected all the time. All right, now we can start wiring up the actual signal wires and each of these terminals on the switch is gonna to go to one of these pins on the jacks. And the outer two connections are going to be the switchable connections for the inputs and then the middle lug is going to be the common connection for the output. So I'm gonna start by putting some solder on each of the terminals of the switch lugs and then we are going to solder some wires to those. It's also helpful to tin the end of the wires. I'm gonna put a little bit of a bend in it. I'm gonna heat up the lug and I'm gonna slide the wire through the bend. Now the way that these switches work uh, might not be intuitive at first, but you can picture there's just a straight line between the switch handle and the terminal it connects to. So when we flip the switch up, it actually connects to the lower terminal. So visually, we want the upper part of the switch to represent the upper jack. So we would want to connect the lower terminal to the upper jack and the upper terminal to the lower jack, if that makes sense. Right, now I'm going to tin the ends of these wires. And tin the terminals to which they're going to connect. tweezers out because these wires are going to get hot when I'm holding them. And again, connecting the upper terminal of the switch to the lower jack, and the lower terminal of the switch to the upper jack. Finally, we connect the middle lug of the switch to the output jack. And that is one of the modules done. So as you can see, it's a very simple routing. Not too much to it. All we have to do is duplicate that on the other half. I've got my MIDI to CV converter playing a sequence through my synthesizer and it sounds great, but suppose that I want to bring in the sequence that I've got going on the Super 16. Well, I can unplug my gate trigger and swap that in. And the same for my CV input, but that's not very seamless. So suppose we instead put in a switch multiple. Then I can simply toggle one to the other.
Well, there you have it. I think that's a really useful addition to my Eurorack setup. It's really quite easy to build. It's a very simple module with no PCB. Uh, and I think it looks great up in the corner. I'm finally happy to have that nice little space filled up. Normally I would knock on a little bit of black paint and label that module, but I'm fresh out of black spray paint. But I will link down below to Mylar Melody's videos on switch molts and why they're so useful. I think he does a great job explaining how they can be really handy in making your sequencing a lot more powerful. And I also wanted to take a moment to say a big thanks to everyone who has joined me over on Patreon really means a lot to me to have your support, and it means that I'm able to take the time to edit these videos and upload them more frequently, so thank you so much. And if you're interested in becoming a supporter and getting early access to all of my new videos, as well as a little bit of bonus content, then you can head on over to patreon.com slash extra life and become a supporter today. And I think that about does it. It was nice to have a quick one and done project like that, that you can just do in one video. And I think I'm gonna try and do a couple more of those like that in the next couple weeks. So be on the lookout for that. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.